My name is Marcus Egan, uh, and I'm here to talk about the use of signals in LucidWorks Fusion. And uh, it's very casual, so feel free to stand and stretch as you go through as we go through this uh, presentation. So there are three problems in search, uh, three common problems, and we're always trying to improve relevancy, but. With rules, and there's a lot of talk about rules here, it's not a scalable approach. You need human intervention. Uh, what about at three in the morning? Or you're trying to run a global team, it's very difficult. And then also text-based matching has always fallen short and will always continue to fall short because uh, text-based matching is only as good as the quality of text. That's why so many of the great search engines that you interact with uh, today take into account other contextual data about uh, the users and the data that they're after beyond just the text that they enter. And then also, and this is my favorite, it's like uh, very important for the KM world uh, attendees, results should not be generic. They have to be personalized. Uh, when, I, when I worked in a company with 190,000 people, if you type in, uh, if the accountants would type in process, and the software engineers would type in process, they get the same results. And really, that was a liability for the company because we really shouldn't be getting the same results. Software engineers are probably looking for software engineering process. Accountants are probably looking for accounting processes. You know, process isn't a great query, right? It should be more there, but that, that's kind of the idea. It's like, you should see your results and you should see your results. So uh, the way we get to the next level in search with LucidWorks Fusion is signals. Uh, and I'll talk about you know, what signals are uh, in just a moment. Signals are user-generated user -generated data uh, for search context. So whether it's a click or browse history or location or browser type or OS, all these factor into, into the search results that, that someone will receive or all your users will receive. So collect all signals. So we're going to talk about really briefly what next level search is, uh, why signals are important for improving relevancy, how signals work in Fusion, uh, Fusion AI's out of the box features for supporting uh, signals, and going beyond next level search. So I'll talk a bit about myself uh, really briefly. Uh, my, again, my name is Marcus Egan. Uh, I am director of product focus mainly on the developer tools. So uh, the code editors, the APIs, um, the client libraries, the connectors, anything that a developer will interface with I'm building a search application uh, is sort of my focus. Uh, I studied data science briefly at the University of Michigan School of Information. Uh, I have keen interest in data visualization and information retrieval. Um, and today, information retrieval includes a host of AI subsets because you need it. Uh, previously, I was a global tech lead at Ford, small car startup in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, then before that, I sold a cybersecurity startup in Silicon Valley that's owned by a public company today. Um, LucidWorks is, at LucidWorks, I'm responsible for improving the ease of use of our products, and that's research, product feedback, customer interviews, uh, roadmap, and delivery. I'm, I'm also Certified in Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics. I've been certified at least, I think, since 2013, maybe a little earlier. That comes, you'll find out why that matters in just a minute, uh, if you don't already know. But I'm also, I'm also an open source contributor to a host of applications that I'm sure everyone in this audience is using at least one of them. So, uh, But TensorFlow and Solar are, are relevant to this discussion in particular. So I contribute to both of those. Um, so the, 
the way, the fastest path to the next level search is through the signals data. So signals enable us to identify and optimize on all the underperforming queries. So uh, there's Pareto principle applies to search really well. It's like, you know, 20% of your queries may result in 80% of the revenue on your site or 80% of the engagement on your site. But those other queries that are underperforming still matter. They're probably just fat fingers, typos, misspellings. Uh, and, and it's really a incumbent on the, the search, app search application to surface the data that those users are looking for or that those queries are intending to surface because that engagement still matters. So the, the classic example for me is like IPDA. If I type IPDA, I'm not going to, I'm going to get zero results and then become unengaged. Obviously, I'm looking for an iPad. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, so the, you want to, and, and so the, the, the interesting thing about that, there's a lot of other people that also type IPDA. So uh, I think there's, everyone in here has a word that they misspell every time they type it, even though they know how to spell it. Uh, you know, in their mind, you know how to spell it in your mind, but some muscle memory, like the first time you typed it, it was wrong, and you keep doing it. So uh, we're using, it's really important to use the, the wisdom of the collective user base uh, to improve your search. So you, you'll know if a document's not relevant if, if for the same query across 25 users, nobody's clicked it. It's like that's a case where the text matching falls short and you need to leverage signals from the crowd, from the collective crowd, to, to improve relevancy. Because the, the, the people know, listen to them. And then, again, I harp on the same thing that I spoke about earlier. It's like, your search, your search, your search, my search. You know, all of our searches are not the same. You know, like, uh, like, Two weeks ago, or like maybe a month ago, I was asking my friends like if they like saw any cool things for New Year's on Eventbrite, and they're like, for New Year's, and they searched like there's nothing for New Year's on Eventbrite, and I was like, oh, never mind. We we all have we're looking for different things, right? So maybe New Year's is a different day for different people. So you have to really think about, you know someone's user behavior over time and, and, and try to understand what's, what's important to that searcher. Um, so signals are important for enhanced relevancy. I talked about that again. Given an underperforming query in real time, I can determine uh, what someone's really looking for. Uh, and for every query that comes into your search engine, you have to understand what relates most to the query based on all the behaviors of all the users when you're searching. So I'll give you that example. If you know there's a document that matches 25 queries or 25,000 queries in some cases for us. Oh, man. So, let's see. Don't dial me. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Go away. This is very hard. Uh, just a moment here. I'll pull it back up. It's a... Uh, Oh, you're still there. So I'll get into the like how we categorize signals, OK? So there's a request signal, there's a response signal, and there's a user interaction signal. We've sort of covered these ideas already. A request signal is everything you know about a searcher before the request goes out, so you know their location. Uh, I was looking for some pants recently. Uh, thank God we power this company's search that I was searching for the pants for. because. Like, 
I, I, I spilled some oil on the train and I wanted to get some replacement pants. But I had to find a store that I could buy online and pick up in between the train station and my office. Uh, and so having this request signal that showed where my location was made it really easy. There you go. And so a response signal is, is all of the information that you can, that you can send back based on uh, how, how the signal is configured in Fusion. And I'll show you that in just a moment here. And then user interaction signals. And so the, the response signal is basically the essential signal. It's a base signal. It's like you want to capture all the metadata, all the context data about uh, a request. And then send it back to, to Fusion. User interaction signals are, again, the clicks, add to carts, purchases, some custom action that you're, you're tracking. Maybe it's like uh, on the New York Times use case, save for later or favorite. Uh, so these are the user interaction signals that help drive personalized search. So if, if you think about those three things we need to do to improve relevancy, they sort of map to the types of signals that we have in Fusion. Uh, and here's what a, no, you can't see that, but this is a sample of what a, a signal looks like. And this is just like formatting of JSON, but you know, there's a, even I, it's a, there's a name in there. There's a user ID, name of a product, that's not really a signal, but there's a user ID, uh, there's a query, uh, there's a filter, a timestamp, and a signal type. So timestamp's critical because when someone searches matters uh, often as much as where they search from. So you can think of that as, a, as a, an important one. And then, again, out of the box with Fusion AI, you get boosts with signals, which is for every filter combination, what are the best items to surface given all of the, the signals that we've collected. So it's like we use collaborative, collaborative filtering to, to get to that point, and you don't have to worry about it. You can, use, you can just use it out of the box. Automatic query rewrites, so your synonyms.txt file is constantly being updated uh, along with uh, a host of other optimizations to grab those underperforming queries and rewrite them. So IPDA becomes iPad. Uh, I think that's probably my favorite feature in the product. So. Um, and why I joined Looseworks. Uh, and then experiments is just, you know, we don't assume we know what's best. Uh, it's a data-driven approach. It, we'll test and, and try to determine what's best um, using experiments. So sometimes some signals lead to outcomes that are less than optimal, so you can tune them or, 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 or test them against another outcome. Uh, there's user item recommendations. So... Sometimes a recommendation is based on an item that you're already looking at or a piece of content you're already looking at. Uh, and then sometimes recommendations are based on who you are, who we know you to be. Uh, so, like every time I go to Foot Locker, they show me some Jordans. Like I already got them though, but like they show them to me just because I've gone there and bought them. And then the, again, one of the most important features of a product uh, and a signal is really enhances this is query intent classification. You need to know, and, and like, depending on what business you're in, this is, this can be a multi-billion dollar problem we've seen uh, for like heavy manufacturing or uh, research and development uh, or like, you know, um, life sciences or fraud detection in financial services. So like query intent classification, uh, is someone looking for help? Does someone have a problem? Are they trying to find a part that's very specific? You know, in a company where there are two million parts uh, on every rig and they need to find a very specific part or there's gonna be heavy penalty. I think this is where query intent classification is really important in, in the e-commerce world. It's like this person is expressing purchase intent. 
clear purchase intent and being able to understand that and using signals to en en enrich the and improve the accuracy of your query intent classification is a game changer. Uh, so why fusion if you have solar? Solar is sort of a data store and you can get stuff out of it faster and more performantly than uh, database like queries, but Fusion gives you storage retrieval, data, data processing, uh, more security, machine learning, uh, and, and, and constantly improving relevancy. So like machine learning once is like fine, you can do that on your corpus, but like getting that into a production pipeline in such a way that it's constantly improving relevancy over time is a challenge. And so Fusion essentially gives your company the power of 16, 20 data engineers. So that you can so you can do that type of thing, and we also ship with a, t a ton of models, uh, but we're not just a black box. Uh, and we, you can use App Studio for the front end of your search, but if you have a front end for your search, you don't need it sometimes. Uh, and, and we can ingest data from whether it's Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, um, and that that can be a challenge to to get that data into your search pipelines. Uh, you can talk to me about that if you're having trouble or if you haven't even explored it. And you can store, you know, we work with the, the Spark native formats, right? So you can use Parquet files to, to load a large amount of data into Fusion quickly. But again, as I said, Fusion is not a black box. Uh, we work with most of the popular machine learning libraries. I mentioned that. Uh, I work with TensorFlow quite a bit, also MLeap, uh, but there are a, a ton of others. Keras I use. You can use Python, you can use PyTorch, Spacey, XGBoost, you know, whatever your data scientists use, you can, and you can uh, leverage it. And so you all will be empowered by your company because your company's going to be like, oh, wow, you got some of the work our data scientists have been doing into production? Thank you. Uh, right now, that's a big uh, pain point for a lot of businesses to struggle. Lots of really smart people, not a lot in production. Uh, data scientists in search development, they, again, they converge when, when you empower them in that way. So, and if you're interested, you, 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 your team can go check out on GitHub the Python Data Science Toolkit. That's probably a little hairy for three in the afternoon on a Thursday at the end of a conference, but Someone somewhere might want to take a look at it uh, at some point. Uh, thank you. My name is Marcus Egan. Uh, that's who I am. And 